Um, so just to begin with then, the, the science of climate change is obviously a controversial issue. Um, but why would you make the case that it was clear, or how would you make the case that it's clear? Okay, um, it's only controversial in um, the public sphere, in, in, prof in the professional uh, uh, corridors of climate change scientists. Um, it, it, it's uh, rock solid. Um, now, ha having, having said that, uh, of course, science uh, it always has a degree of uncertainty. Um, but of the scientific issues of uh, you know, the recent ages, um, the understanding of uh, the issue of climate science and climate change uh, is, is really very well founded. You know, we know that, we've measured that. Um, humans have uh, changed the chemistry of the atmosphere, and in particular they've changed the quantity of heat-trapping gases by increasing them through, through burning fossil fuels. Uh, humans have also affected the climate system in other ways, but, but the primary way is through um, releasing carbon dioxide by burning fossil fuels. You know, which was completely unwitting and, and in support of the prosperity that we all now enjoy. So, you know, it, was, it, was, it seemed to be a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Um, but by changing that atmospheric chemistry, adding these heat-trapping gases, you know, the heat-trapping gases will trap more heat. So the planet is responding. The, the, uh, the balance of heat on the planet has been upset. Um, the heat is accumulating in the oceans. It's slowly melting ice. Um, and uh, one of the consequences, in, to the in addition to the warming, is that it will change the patterns of, of distribution of atmosphere and ocean, and therefore the climatic zones that we inherited and that we've constructed the modern world to exploit. And to what extent is the, the science developing? Are we getting new information? Is it becoming clearer? Yes, yes, all, all the time. Um, the, the, the more we study how the planet is changing, the more we see... Uh, the effects of this uh, this modern warming, um, and and I think from the scientific point of view, uh, the changes that we're seeing, particularly in the polar regions, but and especially in the Arctic, are taking place much more quickly uh, than even the most pessimistic, if you like, of scientists had uh, had considered even even a decade ago. So, for example, this year the Arctic sea ice cover in the summer, when it when it melts back to a minimum, almost beat the the record of two thousand and seven which itself was the, by far the least ice cover that has been seen. But, but actually, more to the point, the volume of ice, which is much more difficult to estimate and measure, probably was far less than in 2007. So although the cover was about the same, the thickness of the ice is less. The, the ice is retreating at about 7% per year and has been for the last two decades. Um, and that's going to have enormous consequences for the coupling between the ocean and atmosphere over the Arctic and therefore the weather systems that we experience at high latitudes. And why do you think that the public isn't catching on? Why, why, why is it so difficult to communicate this science to the public? Well, you know, on, on uh, virtually any political issue, if you had 50, 60, 70 percent of the general public accepting that the issue was true and needed addressing, um, politicians would give their eye teeth for that. So both in America and in the UK and elsewhere in the world, there's been huge public uh, support, if you like, for the, the reality of human-induced climate change. Now, it's true that the debate has become much more shrill over the last couple of years, uh, partly because you know, vested interests have been sowing doubt. We know there's a lot of evidence that that's true. Um, but partly because the, the media continue to represent these big issues through the form of debate, which is an extremely bad way of trying to address complex issues. If, if you put somebody in the blue corner and somebody in the red corner and the rules of engagement are that one should beat the other, just like Prime Minister's Question Time or, or all the debates that we've been taught are the way to you know, have these discourses uh, since we were at school, then actually um, the, the way that you win the debate um, is, is political mud wrestling. You, know, you, you denigrate your opponent, you, you cherry pick evidence. You know, the, the rules of engagement are to win. And, and on a big issue like that, that is an absolutely idiotic way of addressing the problem. But it's the way the media constantly do it. You know, the views of 10,000 scientists are represented by one person in the blue corner and they're countered by somebody in the red corner. Actually, we need dialogue. We need to establish where we disagree, where we agree, and then figure out how we move forward from there in some sensible way. So debate is, is an extremely unhelpful way of addressing this issue. And the conference today is looking at the nexus between health, security and climate change. What do you hope will be achieved here? 
Well, what we know is that the, the media have decided that climate change is no longer a story, not for the moment anyway, not until <clears throat> perhaps something very dramatic happens. Um, but from my experience at the Science Museum, we know that a way of engaging people in a subject is through the issue of health. Another way, of course, is through the issue of security. So if we're looking for a new narrative, and a real narrative, I mean, it's a true narrative, but it's one that hasn't been adequately developed up until now, then the health and security aspects are ways through people's uh, barriers under their radars to engage them with the issue. Once they're engaged with the issue and begin to put the pieces together, then they're in a much better position to make up their own minds and, and decide what needs to be done about it. So I see this as being not only important because it's real, there are medical issues, there are security issues, but also as a way of engaging a much broader church uh, of non-specialists. Thanks very much for joining us.